everyone. Today I'm lucky enough to be driving uh, one of the classic cars I've always wanted to drive, a Porsche 356. Um, and the owner of that car is right here next to me. I, I actually approached John here at a car show one day saying, oh, I love your car, can I take your car for a drive, can I film it? And uh, he's been kind enough to agree and um, this, this car is not disappointing in any way. It, it is such a beautiful car to drive. Um, this particular one is a 58 or 59, John? A model year 59, yeah. produced in uh, September of 1958. Right, right. And, and, and that's the amazing thing, that this, this is a 50s car. This, this car was produced long before most of us were even born. And, uh, and, and in a lot of ways, it feels like a modern car. You know, it's got synchro mesh gears, it's got light steering, it's got great handling. And this is a 70 horsepower car, isn't it? Which, that's a, yeah, that's right. It has a super engine. Yeah. The, or the regular engine that year had 60, and this yeah. had an additional 10 horsepower. Wow. Yeah. And I guess because it's so light, it still feels powerful and torquey. It is really a lovely car to drive. So what else can you tell us about the car, John? Well, this is the successor to the Speedster. Right. From 1955 to 1959, uh, Porsche responded with a low-cost entry for the American market, the Speedster, right. yeah. because the distributor in New York, Max Hoffman, asked them for it. And But by 1959, he said, I need something that's a little bit more um, uh, comfortable. Yep. So I want roll-up windows, I want a slightly higher windscreen, yeah. and I want comfortable seats. Yeah. And so for one model year, Porsche outsourced to the um, Drowse factory, hence the word convertible D. Right. And they made 1,300 and, and 30 yeah. of this car before transitioning to the Roadster the following year. Right. And I think you told me there's only about 400 left now, right? Yeah, they made 1,300, there's about 400 left. This car is 85588, so it's yeah. the 88th one made uh, in that series, and it was made in the second month, September yeah. of 58. Yeah. Boy. And, and I guess this is why I love driving classic cars, is, you know, it's like stepping back in time. I, I almost enjoy driving classic cars more than I dr enjoy driving modern sports cars, because there's so much more to it, there's so much more feel to it. I mean, I'm really having a great time driving this car. It, I, I think this car is ideally suited to back roads, yeah. windy roads of Connecticut. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that I'd have as much fun, um, you know, with a with, with this car on an open straightaway. Right, yeah. But on these roads, yeah. it's ideal. Yeah. It's just such a pleasure, isn't it? The steering is so light. You know, it's it's in a lot of ways like driving a modern car because the gears work so smoothly. The brakes work well, and it's got ample power for the size of the car, and it's comfortable, as you say. It's a, um, you know, they, that's what they did with this model, isn't it? They made it more comfortable. The seats are so yeah. comfy. Sprung the, seats. Yeah, yeah, the seats are nice. There's no wind in your face. The, the wind, windshields are uh, high enough. Yeah, I mean, the car. Speedster is the iconic car right. that we've yeah. seen in the movies. Yeah. But really, the seats are a piece of a foam board. Yeah. You're sitting on a piece of foam on the floor. Right, right. Um, the, and you're also sitting uh, yeah, very like low yeah. in the car. Uh, so it's got a beautiful profile. Yeah. But it's not that uh, it's not that luxurious. Yeah. So um, it's a completely different feeling to be feeling on uh, comfortable sprung seats, and yet without the big bustle of a top. Yeah. The padded top of the cabriolet. Yeah. Uh, sticks up like a Volkswagen right, top, right, right. and so they lost a lot of the lines yeah. of the Speedster when yeah. they moved to the Cabriolet. Right, right. And the Speedster is a Speedster is a crazy expensive, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just got that great 
me, yeah, yeah. Speedster, yeah. and it's what everybody recognizes yeah, yeah. for the last 50 years. Yeah. Well, and this is a far more comfortable car to drive. And far more rare. They yeah. only produced this car for one year, right. and then they went to the Roadster uh, for 1960 and 61. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a magic vehicle. I'm loving driving this car. So is this the original wheel? No, this is uh, a, a period correct wheel. This yep. is a Les Leston Sterling Moss model. Right. So it's got the Sterling Moss signature right. in, uh, yeah, in yeah. the aluminum. Yep. Uh, but it's an aluminum uh, core and, uh, and wood. Uh, they would have, uh, you would have been able to get a Les Leston or a Nardi uh, or a VDM. Those are the three choices of aftermarket right. wheels uh, that year. The other thing that's not original, this is my mother's gear shift knob off of my mother's 1957. Really? My mother had a green 57 coupe and uh, she saved her gear shift knob. So it's, and that's it's it. only one year off. Yeah, it's that's only one fantastic. year off. The, the correct gear shift would have been uh, oh, like, just oh, like oh, this. Oh, right. um, the, the Roadsters had black knobs. Right. And, uh, uh, convertible D and the Speedsters had the white knobs. Right. So you would have had white uh, dashboard trim right. only for the Convertible D and the Speedsters. Yes. The other interesting thing is the radio. Yeah. This was the. Uh, this is not a correct radio. This yeah. would have been an, an invention in 1963. Yeah. Blaupunk made the picnic radio yeah. that you could take with you yeah. uh, that would uh, work uh, yeah. on a picnic using uh, AA batteries. Right, right. Uh, or in the car using the car's speakers. I love that radio. I have the correct Blaupunk Frankfurt yeah. radio for this car, but I kind of like the Art Deco uh, yeah, look of, yeah. the, of the picnic radio. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's a great feature to show people. The, the day I met John, he showed me that radio and I was, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, this is really something. Yeah, filming aside, this is really something. <laughs> <laughs> this is the car I always wanted. My yeah. father had a 1960 Roadster. My mom had a 57 Green Coupe. Yeah. They talked about how much fun it was to drive in yeah. Connecticut then. Yeah. And those old, um, uh, you know, on the winding roads, yeah. they would go skiing, you'd put your skis on a ski rack on yeah. the back, yeah. drive up to Mad River Glen yeah. in Vermont, and uh, these were great in the snow, yeah. so it really was a year-round car. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't need that much power because uh, the Merritt Parkway, which is the main yeah. road around here, is a windy, yeah. uh, narrow highway, yeah. scenic highway. Yeah. So. Growing up, I always had the romantic notion of the Porsche 356, yeah. and I said, I don't need the power of a Ferrari, yeah. I just really want the fun yeah. of a Porsche 356. Yeah. It feels fast at yeah. 25 miles an hour. Yeah, we're yeah. going 25 miles an hour right now, yeah, and yet we're hugging these corners, yeah, yeah. hugging these turns. Honestly, I wouldn't be having any more fun in a modern convertible. This is so neat. And you know, you feel the road through the wheel, you feel the road through the through the pedals. Um, you're low enough that, you know, you get the sensation of speed. The engine sounds great behind you. Yeah, you really, the, this is a fantastic car to drive, isn't it? And is it a 12 volt, do you know? Ah, this is a 6 volt. This is a 6 volt, is 6 it? volt ah. electric. A lot of uh, 356 owners converted to 12, yeah. but I've left this car alone. Yeah, yeah. And in seven years, uh, it's never not started for me. Right. I um, I fire it up maybe once or twice in the winter. Yep. Don't really use it in the yep. winter. Yeah. But it never disappoints me in the spring. Right. 